Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jason from Selling Fairfax by the Pound. And uh, I thought I would share something a little different with you today. This is a Squire Bullet Strat. Um, so if you're a Genesis fan, you are probably aware that they are doing a reunion tour right now. It's almost over. Uh, this is December. Uh, I think today's December 1st. Uh, 2021 and if you're into uh, the instruments they play then you've probably seen the internet losing its mind over the fact that Mike Rutherford is playing a Squire Bullet Strat. Uh, the story behind it is he was in South Africa uh, right when the pandemic started so he was stuck there he could not leave Cape Town and he didn't have his guitar with him so he scrambled to buy a guitar to have something to play uh, where he was and, you know, practice the Genesis songs for the upcoming tour. And he got a couple of these. Um, Squire Bullet Strat. It's in sonic gray, and it has a tremolo. Now, you'll, you'll, you'll see a version of these with a hardtail bridge that's available. I, I don't know if it's available everywhere, but it's the one that's for sale in the U.S. Uh, so this was a limited run that was just for Asia and Africa, I guess. So, you know me, <laughs> I can't just rest. Uh, I had to uh, try and track one down. So I actually found one in Japan and one in Malaysia that had not yet been sold. So uh, these were new, still new. Uh, and what I've done is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I'll hold it over here. I've done all the mods that, that Mike Rutherford's tech um, has done to his, which include uh, cat hair. No, not no, no cat hair. Um, change the tuners to Goto's, and um, and the saddles. Change the saddles to the Graftex String Saver saddles. So you can see those. And then here's the tuners, Goto's. So plays much better. It's much more reliable. Uh, on some of them, apparently, he's got uh, noiseless Fender noiseless pickups in there. I didn't do that because these pickups sound just fine, and I'm not playing on any huge stages with big lighting rigs and things that could create crazy interference. So, unfortunately, I don't have that problem. Uh, I wish I did, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So, I've done these mods. It plays great. I love it. I've done also done a pretty thorough setup and. Um, adjust it, like adjusted the intonation, and I've got the tremolo sitting just a hair off of the body, so it's not completely decked, but it's but it's pretty close. Uh, and I got the action nice and low. I adjusted the truss rod a little bit, so that the, there was a little bit of relief in the neck, and since I'm mainly a Rickenbacker guy, I like playing with a very low, flat action. So uh, I've set this one up to do the same, the same thing. Uh, let's see, and just in case you didn't see it, there's the headstock there. Interesting. It's like it's like I don't know. It's just like ink stamped or something. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like a decal or anything. Like it's just printed on the wood, and it's just a satin finish on there. No gloss. Uh, but the body is glossy. It's um, and it's not bad. There's a spot here in the neck pocket where I don't know if that's a buffing compound or what, but there's just a little bit of white spots in there. But not too bad. I mean, for a two three hundred dollar brand new guitar. It's not bad. So, we're going to do the exact same thing to this one, since I, I got two. And, uh, and you can either follow along with these steps on your own Squire Strat, uh, or, um, or you can buy this one. I think I'm going to put this one uh, up on, online for sale, on Reverb. So, first thing I'm going to do, let's see, what do I want to do first? I'm going to leave the plastic on. I'm going to take the plastic off last, and when I do that, I loosen the screws a little bit to really get it off of there. A lot of people just rip the plastic off, and, the, and it leaves little bits of plastic under the screws. Uh, I think that's sloppy. I don't like that. So, I'm going to make sure I do that right. Uh, but I'm not going to do it yet. So, first, um, first what we're going to do is, well, we're going to get the strings off. So, let's do that first. Okay, I've got all the strings removed from the tuners. Now I'm just gonna clip them right here in the middle so I can pull them out of the back of the guitar easily. Pop. Two, three, four. Got 
Come on. Five and six. All right, I'm going to wind these up so that I can just throw them on the floor and they'll be easy to pick up later. Of course, this last one's going to give me a hard time. Does not want to get out of there. Got to get the poker, poke it out of there. If that'll fit, I don't know. Okay, finally. Now, I've never seen this before. I'm noticing that these these ball ends are different colors than I'm used to. Uh, I know the Diodario sets have you know the different colors, but they're usually brass, red, black, green, purple, silver. Um, these I'm seeing different colors here. That the low E was brass and the A was red. That's what I'm used to. But then we had like yellow, this like sea green color, and like a light blue. Maybe that's something f they've used different colors for the Asian market or something. Or maybe it's a different string gauge. I'm not sure. If you know the answer to that, put it in the comments, please, so I can learn something. Because I learn something every day, but I haven't learned something yet today. So. There's still a few hours left, so um, let's see here. All right, so I've got the strings off. Uh, I put the tremolo bar in, uh, in here. Didn't really need to. I'll put that right back in the other guitar where it was. Something else I'm going to do to these guitars. I've already done it to the first one. Is put a a little spring down in the the hole where the, the vibrato arm goes, a little tension screw, just so that it kind of lets you put the arm in place where you want it. If you don't do that, it, it's, you're kind of stuck with it sitting in a certain position. You might not like it. So I, li I love using those little tension screws. Um, so we'll get to that later. So now I've got the strings off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the, these saddles off of here. And let's see. I'm going to put something back here just in case the screwdriver slips so I don't Scratch the brand new finish. Oh yeah, you know what? Now I remember why I put the arm in there. It was so I could raise the the tailpiece up a little bit and slide this card under here just to help me protect the finish. So now that'll sit there. Do, 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 do. And I can take these out quickly. Boom. All right, all gone. No more of these cheap Squire saddles. Um, the reason that you know you, you want to change these out is these string savers have. I guess it's like a little graphite piece or something there that the string rests on, and uh, it, it's it's easier on the string, so there's less a lot less chance that the string will form this like hard break angle and break. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and open this thing up. Open this thing up, see what we got. No, well, it's clear packaging, so we can see what we got. There's no mystery here. Okay. This is a nice little nice little package here. They include all the hardware you need. They even give you the little little hex wrench, little Allen key. Um And by the way, no, I'm not sponsored by anybody or anything like that. 
these were recommended to me, or no, I mean this is, I'm using these because this is what Mike Rutherford used, but I got these from Fret Nation, which is a cool little website if you want an alternative to the, the giant websites that are out there with musical instruments and supplies. Fret Nation has a lot of the same stuff, probably get a better price, and they're just cool to deal with. And the guy who runs it has the same name as me, which is kind of funny. Um, a friend of mine ordered some bass strings from them once, and the envelope came. This is when he was he had just started the website, and the envelope came to him, and the, re the return address was was my my name. And he <laughs> emailed me and said, "Did you start a website?" And I'm like, "Oh no, that's not me. That's that's uh, that's another another Jason Mendelson." I'm setting up franchises. <laughs> Alright, and so I'm putting in these saddles. I'm going to bring them in pretty tight because it's easier to let them out. Is it easier to let them out or push them back in? You know what, I'm just going to put them where I think they should be. And then hopefully I don't have to do any adjustment. Okay, right there. Perfect. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so I've got the when I got it to about the fourth and fifth saddle here, I'm uh, starting to notice an interesting problem. They're starting to fan out towards me. I'm going from the high E to the low E, and I noticed it on the D, and I thought, hmm, and I really noticed it with the A. They're fanning out towards me because these saddles are not the same size as the ones I'm taking off of here. Now, I thought I bought two sets of the same saddles. Uh, now I'm not sure what's going on. So let's see here. I'm going to measure these. So the string savers I've got here are 11.1 millimeters wide. And the saddles I just took off, the stock Squire saddles, are 10.3. So that's 0.8 millimeters difference. You multiply that by five spaces in between six saddles and, well, this is what happens. So, we're going to have to see what the heck's going on here. So right about now I'm thinking something that, used to, I used to hear it in shows and movies when I was a kid all the time. A character would always say, hey, what's the big idea? You don't, you don't hear people say that anymore. But that's what I'm thinking right now. What's the big idea? All right. So let's put that back in there, put that back in there, let's put this off to the side. Alright, let's look at the one that I've already done. These, how big are these? Yeah, 10.3, 10.2, 10 10.1, something like that. So clearly, this second set of saddles, of string saver saddles, is the wrong size. So, we're going to continue this video on another day. Alright, we're back and we've got the correct parts now. Uh, 2 and 1 16th. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get these bad boys on here. Nice little spring there, you can see that. There's the saddle, by the way.
All right, they're on there. Now let's take a look at the one I already did. I'm gonna get just a rough idea of how far back these saddles should be. Okay, you can't see that. There you go, you can see that. All right, so that's about where they should sit. So I'm gonna crank these down a little bit more. All right, I think that'll do. Uh, something I'm gonna do before I put the strings on is I'm gonna get all these this clear plastic off of the plastic parts. Um, so the pickups are real easy, I think. I think this will just lift right off of here. All right, and there's also a film over the whole pick guard. A lot of people just peel this off. The problem with that is you're left with these little bits that get stuck under the screws. So I'm going to loosen all these screws and it'll, it'll lift off perfectly after I do that. Okay, I'm going to take one screw all the way out. That might help. Might help get it started. Put that right there. Done. You don't you don't have to loosen the screws that hold the pickups to the pick guard. For some reason those it just comes right off of there. Same thing for the five-way switch. Didn't need to mess with those. Oh yeah, I am going to get the three knobs off of here. I've got this plastic thing that's uh, it's in my mini fridge for scraping the, the freezer portion of the, the mini fridge. So I didn't want to use a screwdriver and mess anything up you know, with that hard metal. So this is just a plastic won't do any damage and it's easy to get right under there and I just get it under the edge of the knob and then just lift a little bit and turn so it lifts it in all directions and it comes right off of there okay got those out of the way and you know what I'm going to loosen these little nuts for the same reason, I loosen, loosen the pit guard screws. All right, we're left with a little piece under this one, so I guess I didn't loosen it enough. I guess you can get free lessons. I'm gonna pass. <laughs> because I imagine those are beginner lessons. All right, we got all the plastic off of the top. Uh, let's put these knobs back on here. I'm going to have it turned all the way up and 10 pointing at the player. I think that's how it came, but not 100% sure. But it makes sense, so let's do that. Okay. One more thing I'm going to do is get the plastic off the back. Same thing. I'm going to loosen these screws. There's only six of them here, so this is going to go much more quickly. Now there's a piece of plastic on this neck plate here. Let's see, when I peeled this off of the other one, it left a lot of funky looking residue. Yeah, see, and this one, I don't really want to loosen the bolt screws going into the neck. So I think I am going to leave these in and just be really careful. 
as I remove the plastic, and it looks like it's all coming off, so I think we're okay. But it is, it is leaving uh, some funky looking, it's not even a residue, it's just kind of like where the residue was, I guess. I don't know. In this case, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of plastic being left in there on the back of the guitar that you can't even really see uh, to avoid messing with the st kind of the stability of those four bolts going in there. So, if a future owner wishes to remove it and take any little pieces out that might be in there, I don't even, I don't even know if there's anything left in there. I think there's one there. They can do that. So. We got the plastic off, it's looking good. Now we gotta change the tuners. So let's do that. Do exactly that. These don't have a screw. Let's see, how's the camera? Can you see that? Yeah, you can barely see it. So there's no screw back here to remove, so all I need to do is put this thing on here. I'm gonna loosen, loosen, be This is, uh, these are my new tuners, my go-tos. So let's see, let's pack up all this mess, get it out of the way. All right, I'm gonna put my old tuners over here out of the way. Sure, you can still see. Okay, you can still see. All right, now let's get one of our new tuners. All right, make sure you can see. Yeah, it's not bad. And these have a little place for a screw right there that this guitar does not have holes for, so we're going to have to drill some holes. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and basically install these tuners without that screw. Now this might be overkill, this might be more work than I need to do, but this is kind of in the interest of, uh, kind of along the, the idea of cut cut or measure twice and cut once so you know I want to make sure this is, this is done right so I'm gonna go ahead and put these in place so that I can mark where the holes need to be so that I drill the holes in exactly the right place okay and not too tight just kind of finger tighten that because I want it to have a little give because I'm gonna put I'm gonna put something along the edge of the tuners that will line them all up. Okay, I've got them on there. Now let's let's turn it over and I'm just going to get something uh, something straight that I can put against these to make sure they're all lined up. And I just happen to have these these files right here. These. Uh, let's see. So I can just go ahead and do that. Let me use the side of it. And I should have had a pencil ready. <laughs> I don't have a pencil ready. Maybe that won't move. Let's see. Alright, so I've got these all marked. I'm going to take them right back out. In case you want to see it, these are the new tuners. Go to. All right, these are the screws that they included. So 
So, let me get my drill. I think the 1 16th ought to be fine. Yeah, it's perfect actually. Alright, I don't need to go too far. So I'm going to put a little piece of tape on the drill bit so I know how deep to drill. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> I need to go that far, but the tuner has that little piece that we're going through. So I only need to go that far down into wood. So I'm going to tape my bit right there. Tape that right there, so I know not to go deeper than that. Okay, ready to make some holes. There's no going back. This is now an irreversible mod. I guess I'll leave that in there, just in case, but I think we're okay. Alright, get this out of the way. Right back there. Okay. Alright. Looks pretty good. So now I think we're ready for those tuners again. Install them for the second time. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get that in there. Okay, just again, just finger tighten this. And let's grab one of these screws. Go to the back side. that right in there. I should point out I'm not a real guitar tech. I don't know what I'm doing here. I just kind of learn by doing it. There's probably better ways to do everything I do. Uh, so, you know, I, I expect I'm going to get some comments that say, oh, you shouldn't have uh, used a blah blah blah. Yeah, okay, fine. You know, this is just me. And see, look at this. I'm already having trouble getting that screw in, so either I didn't drill the hole deep enough or maybe I just need to put some a little bit of lubricant on the screw I've heard of that trick before, so let's go check that out let's see here. alright, I've got some, some lip balm here it is winter, it is a uh, bit, bit nippy out a bit nipply, uh, so you know, this has multiple uses, but I keep this old one in the toolbox uh, for screws. So, I, this is a trick I learned where you just get a little bit of this on the... Ooh, that's about empty. And get the other one. Alright, there's a little bit more in here. I think this one's going to have to go bye-bye. I like repurposing things. So, when this gets... when these get too low to to use on the lips, I throw them in the toolbox. Well, I can't get that done in there. So I have to use my, let's use this little tool here to reach further down in. All right, just get a little bit on there. And we'll see how this does. Makes it a lot easier for the screw to go in. And there's a little bit of excess, you can just wipe it on your lips. I'm not gonna do that because I don't know how old this stuff is. I don't even know if it expires or not. I don't intend to find out on this video. I'll save that for another video. Alright, so one down, five to go. So I think I can probably do these in fast forward time.
Alright, looks like this first one is giving me some trouble. So I don't think I got the hole deep enough. So I'm just gonna drill a little further on that one. Okay, and just line these up one last time before I tighten the nuts on the front. Okay, that looks pretty straight. I'm give these a final tightening. All right, we've got our tuners installed, all tightened up. We've got our new saddles. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. We're ready for some strings. Do this thing. Squeak. Get this thing up to pitch. All right, I'm gonna give some little stretches here. Make sure these are nice and tight on the tuner. Good pull on that one. It was, I guess, it was not quite seated in the the tailpiece or whatever. So that one kind of popped in my hand. But let's just tighten it right back up. See, that's why I do this. Can you imagine that that happened on a gig? Not good. Okay, let's try it one more time. All right, I heard a little ping there, like it's binding somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's loose on that tuner. All right, we're settled in. I'm gonna go ahead and clip these. Clip them. All right, there's one more thing I like to do on these. Let's turn it around so you can see. What I'm gonna do is install, install. All I have to do is drop this thing in a hole. I think install is probably too fancy a word for it, but we're gonna take one of these little uh, trim springs. This is, uh, I bought a dozen of these years ago. Um, <laughs> and I'm not even close to having a, you know, a dozen strats, so obviously I've got several, quite, a, quite a few of these left. So trim arm springs. And all it is, it's a little spring. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, see? It's cute. Little spring. And you just drop this down in this hole here where your tremolo arm goes. I know, it's vibrato. 
Leo Fender screwed up and he confused tremolo and vibrato and now decades later we're still using the wrong, wrong words. I feel like an idiot every time I catch myself doing it. So the vibrato arm, um, just drop it right down in there. And what that does is normally if you just screw this in, it's gonna like rotate until it gets to the bottom and stop. So that means it's either gonna sit tight right there, probably or maybe there, or maybe there, wherever the threading ends, probably where you don't want it. And anywhere else, it's just gonna like dangle. You don't want that. You wanna be able to like move it a little bit and have it stay in place, right? So the spring adds a little bit of tension and it s slows down the motion before it gets to the bottom. So now we can put the arm in place. Uh, okay, that's too tight. So it's going to sit here. You know, see? It doesn't, it doesn't go flying when I hit it. And... Alright, so it does look like this uh, bridge is, is decked. It's like sitting on the top of the body. I don't really like that. That's why I put that card in there. So, um, hopefully when I intonate this, the, it, will, it will require a little more tension to do so, and that will pull up the bridge a little bit so that we don't have that problem. Uh, some people like that because it's more stable for tuning, but I like it to float a little bit. I like to have that two-way vibrato rather than just one way. I like to have it be, go both ways, above and below the pitch. So... Um, yeah, so next, I guess, is to tune it. I can't use the... I usually use an app on my phone to tune. I'm recording this video with my phone, so I'm gonna go get a tuner. Alright, so there's an E in tune. Harmonic. Oh, okay, I guess I lied. It wasn't in tune yet. There we go. Now it's in tune. Let's see how the 12th fret is. Well, it's actually pretty pretty darn close. That's right on. That might be right on. But there's another problem. We've got a little bit of buzzing. So I think what I really need to do, I've had the strings off of this guitar for over a week. Uh, I need to let the wood settle overnight. So we're gonna do, we're gonna pick, we're gonna do that. We're gonna let it sit overnight, let the wood adjust to having tension back on it once again, and we'll pick this up tomorrow. All right, we're back. It's been about 36 hours uh, since I put the strings on. And so this, this neck is, the wood should be settled now. Let's go ahead and check the straightness of the neck. All right, there's a teeny bit of relief, so that is just fine. I'm fretting the first and last frets, and the string just barely moves when I push it down to the fretboard. So that is good enough for me, and it's definitely good enough for a uh, Squire st Bullet Strat, you know. Alright, so um, what I need to do now, I think, is raise these saddles up a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I've raised the saddles a little bit, and I've got a, still got a nice, decent radius down here. So uh, let's go ahead and try and intonate this thing. I think I'm going to kill this light so that we can see the tuner better, because you probably can't see that real good, can you? Eh, it's okay, but I'll bet this is going to be better. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, I've adjusted the saddles for intonation. Uh, that actually took a while to do. Uh, I'm not going to show that video because it's really boring. Uh, I turned the light off so you could see the tuner here, so let's just do one final check of the tuning and the intonation. So here's our E. Okay, harmonic and 12th fret are both right on. Alright, so there we are. Let's, uh, let's turn the, the fancy light back on and do a few final shots of this thing. Okay, there we go. Squire Bullet Strat in Sonic Gray with the vibrato tailpiece, not the HT or hardtail tailpiece. Um, 
We've got the Graftech string saver saddles on there. Two and one sixteenth inch, by the way, not two and three sixteenths inch, as we learned. And here's our Goto tuners. Okay, there we go. Almost forgot the vibrato arm. Can't, can't forget that. Hey, just one more quick thing. Um, I, was, I, I was all done and I was playing the guitar and I was playing those opening chords to Home by the Sea, you know. <clears throat> and you mute that really quick. It's a really short note. And after I muted the note, I could hear like reverb almost. Well, you know what it is? It's the springs in the back of the guitar holding the vibrato um, on. They're resonating. Yeah, hear that? Here, I'll even play one of those one of those nasty chords. Hear that? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, here's my fix for that. And I just did that, I just did this earlier today on my Godan DS1, Daryl Sturmer model. I got that thing playing really nice. I mean, it was good already and it's even better now. I put some foam around the pickups on, in there so they don't knock around when you hit the strings and stuff. And also a, some a piece of foam on the uh, vibrato springs. So I've cut a little piece of foam here. This is just ordinary old foam that came in a shipping box or something. All right, so I'm just gonna just put that in there. No, no attachment necessary. Just it's thick enough that just closing it up will hold it in place. Now, is is this a thing people do? I don't know. Like I said before, I'm not a real guitar tech. I just tinker, and I've been tink tinkering with electric guitars for 25 years, and so I just try things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Let's see if this works. I don't know if there's going to be any long-term effects or if it's going to, you know, gum up the works of those vibrato springs. I read a little bit online, you know, I do a little bit of research and uh, when I try these things, I didn't see anything saying, you know, no, don't do this. You will destroy your vibrato springs. I didn't see anything like that. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay. So there we go. Let's try this out now. Get my Streetwise Studios pick. Okay, barely. I can still hear them, but not as much. Mm. I wonder if I missed a spring, because there's three springs in there. I wonder if my piece, piece of foam didn't cover them all up. Another thing I did was change the high E string on this. So I used a set of tens with a plain G, kind of the ordinary set most people use. I don't usually use a set like that, but I did on this. I took the E off and I changed it out for a 12. To, to, so I could tune it down to D without it being too floppy because you tune down a string it's going to get loose loosey goosey and uh, we don't want that so I don't know if, if Mike does that if he uses a higher gauge I imagine he does but I don't know but I did it and it worked really well so yeah yeah I missed a spring so I need a little I need another little piece of foam so let's do this. Ow! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Do, 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 do. I'll let you see. This is a new phone. Where's the Where's the lens? There's the camera lens. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Put it back. Put this back.
So if any of you watching this have any similar tricks or if you've done something like this before and you can share any tips or anything or warnings or anything like that, please, please put that in the comments. Oh, I can't wait to play Home by the Sea on this. And second Home by the Sea. Oh, why isn't that going in right? Dang it, Bobby. Try that again. To allow that plate to slide just where it wants to be. Okay. There's a little bit of the foam visible there, but at least it's not blocking the access to the, the holes you put the strings in. I don't know what you call those. It's probably a technical term. Once again, full disclaimer, I have no idea what I'm doing as evidenced. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, good. That's good. There it is. It's making the whole table resonate, that low E string. Doesn't normally sound that meaty. Um, yeah, and I've got my D, that D. So the chords would go like this. I'll tune it. I'll, I'll tune it. Just. All right, cool. That's it. That's what I wanted to add in here.